Hi everyone and welcome to this video. I will talk about the generated and object texture coordinates in relation to vector displacement and why we want to use one over the other in most cases. Let's start with the generated coordinates. Here you can see a simple cube with its generated coordinates visualized. This coordinate system is based on the bounding box of the object and is automatically generated from its vertex positions. It ranges from 0 at the minimum point to 1 along the three axes. For this cube the bounding box is shown by the orange lines. Next we will have a look at the object coordinates, again visualized on a cube. This coordinate system depends on the origin of the object itself, which is the source for the coordinates. If the origin is moved around, the object coordinates move with it. Let's have a look at the differences of these two coordinate systems. The right cube shows a Voronoi texture, which uses generated coordinates, whereas the left one shows the same procedural texture, but with object coordinates in use. By rotating both cubes, you can see that the texture stays the same since both texture coordinates are based on the local coordinates of the cube. Same for moving them around. Now I scale both cubes in edit mode along the y-axis. As you can see, the right texture which uses generated coordinates now looks stretched, whereas the left one doesn't. The object scale for both cubes remain at 1, since I only scaled the mesh. If I now reset the cubes and scale both in object mode, the right one gets stretched as before, but also the left one with the object coordinates. Now the scale for both objects change from 1 to 3 for the Y value. As we learned earlier, the generated coordinates are based on the bounding box of an object and range from 0 to 1 on all three axes. That's why the right version gets stretched and is not dependent on the object scale. Different for the left cube with object coordinates. Since these coordinates are based on the object itself, these are dependent on the scale values causing the Voronoi texture to stretch. If I apply the scale now, the values are reset to 1 and the texture isn't stretched anymore for the left version. Let's have a look at how both coordinate systems behave when used for vector displacement. Both planes use a simple material setup with a Voronoi texture used for displacement. For now, the displacement is still turned off. The left plane uses object coordinates and the right one generated coordinates which were slightly modified so that both textures look the same for comparison reasons. All the black areas you see shouldn't move, whereas the brighter an area is, the more it should be displaced when the displacement is used. Now, if I set the scale value to 1, both planes get displaced according to the Voronoi values. You already see that something changed for the left plane. By looking at the displacement from the side, you see that on the left side there are black areas on the upper part of the object, which should not be the case if the values that we see really contribute to the displacement. The right version, which uses generated coordinates, looks correct. All black areas didn't move and the white areas got displaced along the z-axis. Both planes got displaced the same way and are identical in that manner. But the problem with the left version that uses object coordinates is that the object coordinates used to visualize the Voronoi texture don't deform with the surface, which is why there appear black areas on top from the local space of the object. The generated coordinates on the right side stick to the surface and deform with it, which is why the Voronoi texture looks the same with displacement. And that's the reason why in most cases it is better to use generated coordinates for vector displacement, since we can't rely on what we see with the object coordinates. Now the only thing we need to do is to modify the generated coordinates in a way that they are centered and won't stretch when the object's bounding box has different side lengths. Since we know that the values range from 0 to 1 on all three sides, we simply have to subtract 0.5 on all axes to move the generated coordinates to the center of the bounding box. The new range is from 0 to 0.5 on all axes in the positive direction and from 0 to minus 0.5 in the negative direction. Now we only need one more node to fix the stretching. For that we use a vector math node set to multiply and set the three values to the dimensions values of the object. For this cube the modified generated coordinates and the object coordinates are identical. To prove that this setup works, I use the modified coordinates as an input for a Voronoi texture. 
By scaling the object on the x-axis, we see that the texture stretches. To fix it, we need to update the multiply node to the same values as the dimensions. So we set the x value to 7.41 in this case. As we can see, this solves the stretching problem. Same for the y and z axis. As a last step, we can place this setup inside a node group by selecting the three nodes and pressing Ctrl plus G and make the multiply values accessible from the outside. We can use this node group as a base coordinate system for our vector displacement setups and in most cases when we use cubes or spheres we also can leave the default value at 2 since the sides of their bounding boxes have all the same length. That's it for this video. I hope you found it informative and learned something new. Tell me what you think in the comments and stay tuned for the next vector displacement tutorial. Bye!